you and I, I think are about the same age. I'm not exactly sure, but but we've lived through you know SARS and bird flu and co- and uh, uh, the H1N1, which turned out to be the swine flu, and we have influenza every year that that costs about ten thousand to sixty thousand deaths. So wh- why the freak out now? You sent something out on Twitter the other day that I've been saying since the beginning. What don't we know? And Dinesh, as a people, we panic when we don't know enough, right? Yes. Um... Part of it, I think, is the fear of the unknown. A lot of the media reporting on coronavirus is is very suspect. Uh, So, for example, they'll say things like, you know, uh, the number of cases has doubled uh, in the last two days or in the last three days. Well, first of all, uh, they don't mean that the number of cases has doubled. They mean that the case count has doubled. Right. And those are two completely different things because obviously testing is more widespread. So even if the number of cases were the same, we'd be measuring more cases because we're testing more people. So these the reporting of cases doesn't actually measure the spread at all. Now, I think the death count is in some ways a little more reliable measure uh, of the spread because, after all, that is a statistic that can't be waved away. Right. Uh, We're counting the number of people who die from the virus, and hopefully we're counting them accurately. Uh, And that death count has has flattened. Uh, So that is, I think, encouraging news. The bottom line of it is, uh, to me, the global panic and the global shutdown is still a little incomprehensible. It's a little incomprehensible, and the rhetoric that goes along with it doesn't match uh, the action. So I say to myself, is it the case that uh, the world is in a freak out mode or is it the case that they're withholding something uh, yeah. it could be that they have information that they haven't shared they don't want to cause even more of a panic than there is and so there's something we don't know that would make sense of it all but i have to say that each day i feel this sort of sense of um, that that there's a fill in the blanks here uh, that i'm still waiting for and um, and what we hear in the public domain doesn't quite match uh, what they're asking us to do. It's Dinesh D'Souza, a great movie maker, great author. Get uh, a, well, Go to his website for access to all of the stuff that he does. The, the latest book is The United States of Socialism, which we'll get into in a moment here. But also you're working on the new movie, and we can get into why you were able to, to actually work on it now during the shutdown in a moment. But but back to what you just said a minute ago. Not only are, are they playing games with the, with the count, and then the media uses it like, look, Trump doubled the count overnight. Um, but what they're not telling us as well is as we get higher numbers of people who have been infected with COVID-19 or coronavirus, we also know that mathematically that means that it's not 3% death rate. It's more like 2% or 1% or even less. 3% was the penultimate that it could possibly be because we didn't know who had it and already had it through their system and they're fine. So there actually is a silver lining to seeing higher numbers and the death count not exponentially going up, right? Exactly. Since the death count is a fixed number and the number of cases is an expanding number, a rapidly expanding number, it stands to reason that when you divide the one by the other, the rate of death uh, occurring is going to go down and probably go down pretty dramatically. But that only begs the question uh, that we have clearly a serious problem. Uh, I I firmly believe it's more contagious than the flu, for example. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to the flu, we don't even dream of shutting down the world economy. Uh, so something needs to justify that kind of extreme action. And it's got to be uh, the prospect of just a vast, vast number, not only of cases, but also of casualties and deaths. Um, so that's we'll have to see if that actually comes to pass. Um, uh, I think that the in the beginning, we thought that this was sort of a uh, um, a political hit on Trump, that right. the left was jumping on this for its pure ideological uh, benefit. Now, obviously, the fact that this is going on in India, my sister, who lives in a remote part of India, they have a curfew. You've got to do your shopping between 8 and 11 in the morning. So this is clearly a global freeze. Um, and so I think there's obviously a lot more to it. But I also think that the credibility of the World Health Establishment is at stake. This yeah. is, by the way, one of the few institutions that people still trust. So if it turns out that this happens to be a great big scare uh, and we look back in retrospect and think we needn't have done all this, it will this the global health establishment will be 
uh, will, will take a tremendous hit. It's one of the few institutions I say we still trust. Yeah. And that trust will be out the window. I couldn't agree more. It's Dinesh D'Souza. Get to DineshD'Souza.com. It's D-I-N-E-S-H D-S-O-U-Z-A.com. And, and go and, and get all the movies if you don't have them already. Go and read all the books if you don't have them already. The United States of Socialism 